we're going to graph this polynomial now. Graphing may be a very graphing polynomials may be a new concept. I am not going to use the clueless method. So what we're going to do instead is use the techniques I just described. We're going to start with end behavior. So first of all, this right here is in expanded form. It's not. It's in factored form. So how do I get this in expanded form? There's a few ways to do it. I'll do it algebraically. I'm not going to multiply a negative 2 in yet. x minus 1 squared. x squared minus 2x plus 1. x plus 2 times x to the 4th. Now I have to do what I call superfoiling here. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 2 is 2x squared minus 2 times x is minus 2x squared minus 2 times minus 4x and plus 2. I should have gotten 6 terms out of there. I'm missing one. And what are we missing? Negative 2 times x, negative 2x squared. We have a negative 4x. Got that. Plus 2 plus 1 times x. We have another plus x here. And we just bring down the x to the fourth. Now, when I multiply this in here, I'm adding exponents. So we have x cubed times x to the fourth, x to the seventh, plus 2x to the sixth minus 2x to the 6, minus 4x to the 5th, plus 2x plus x to the 5th, 2x to the 4th, 2x to the 5th. Now, I should have combined like terms and simplified. Those cancel. x to the 5th. Fifth, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So 7th minus uh, minus 3x to the 5th plus 2x to the 4th. So I did this because I want to show you that it sucks. There's a better way to go here. Uh, now, last step, negative 2x to the 7th, I'm just distributing negative 2 in, plus 6x to the 5th, minus 4x to the 4th. What's the leading coefficient? Minus 2x to the 7th. All right, going back to end behavior, negative, odd. Odd means they don't match. Negative, it's going to look like this. That was a lot of work to figure out these two. Uh, there is one more nice thing about expanded form. It tells you your y-intercept pretty easily. I'm going to write a plus zero. There's no constant term. The constant term is the y-intercept. So the only th great thing about expanded form so far is you get the y-intercept and the end behavior very easily. How can I get the end behavior without going through this large amount of work? We're going to just shortcut right up here. What I don't care about is minus 1 and plus 2. So this is no longer f of x. So I'm going to write a new name. I'm going to call this p of x. This is the power function right here. So this is a faster way to do what we just did. All I did was I said I don't care about minus 1. I don't care about the plus 2. 2 plus 1 plus 4. There's 7x's total. So I just shortcutted. I didn't need these terms. I didn't. They didn't affect anything. So they're not necessary. Uh, and and our y-intercept could be useful. Uh, so we got our y-intercept. We'll write that down. Zero, zero. What's another way to get the y-intercept? Plug in zero right here. So you can just take zero and f it. F of zero. You carefully plug it in, which I'm not going to do. But you can see right here, you're going to get. 0. So you get the 0, 0. X-intercepts. All right, how do I get these? Keep the factored form. 1, x equals 1. 
That corresponds to one zero. What is multiplicity? Multiplicity is not one. Multiplicity is two. Which means bounce. Next up, not positive two, but what x value makes this zero? x equals negative two. Be very careful. Positive one makes this zero, negative two makes this zero. Negative two, zero. Multiplicity one, which means cross. Last up, what makes this zero? x equals zero. So you get zero, zero. Multiplicity four, this is a bounce. Now, graphing. We're going to start out in the clueless method, which just means we're going to plot points. What points are we going to plot? One, two, three. There's really just three points. These are the same point. But we're going to plot all of our intercepts. Zero, zero. Negative two, zero. Negative one. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Positive one, zero. There we go. I'm looking at the multiplicity. So negative two, positive one. All right, all the mistakes I make are just to show you uh, what to watch out for. Now, I don't know how to connect these together yet. What I need to do is worry about the end behavior. So I don't know what happens in the middle yet, but outside of all this, I'm gonna go down on the right and up on the left. So there I took the end behavior from the furthest point on the left and furthest on the right. Think about everything in between is, is inside the cloud, which we're gonna work on right now. But we got the end behavior. What happens at negative two? We're going to cross right here. So we're gonna cross the x-axis at negative two, okay? How do we uh, deal with our next one is a bounce. So we're going to bounce off the x-axis. Now right here, let's pretend like I don't know that the last one is a bounce. There's only one way to go from here. We have our next x-intercept. I better have a bounce or else I'm going to have a problem. If I get across here, then my graph should have been going up. If you make one mistake, you'll realize it. Now we have a bounce, so the graph's going to look like this. So we got another bounce right there. We got a cross, bounce, bounce. So I said if you make one mistake, you'll notice it. So let's say I screwed up my end behavior and for some reason I thought it went up on the right. And I drew the graph up on the right, what would happen? I no longer have a bounce intercept, I'd have a cross intercept. And that would not agree with this. So this is what I call the math spidey sense, and the way you can do uh, detect it here, if you make one mistake, something won't match up. So if one of these is wrong, it'll mess up the end behavior. Unfortunately, if you make two mistakes, or four mistakes, you won't notice it. So try to make zero mistakes, or one mistake at the most. And how do you reduce mistakes? You practice. There's a lot of practice problems in this section. These are going to be new ideas. I strongly recommend you practice them. So this is one example. And go ahead and practice the uh, other problems. Uh, follow along with the examples in your book. Now another thing you can do is talk about greater than zero or less than zero. And what you would do with that if I wanted to know when was this right here greater than zero, I would just focus on what parts are positive. In this case, it would just be this portion here. So it would be negative infinity to negative two. If this was all less than zero, I would focus on the three negative parts. And if it could be equal to zero, I would include the x-intercepts. If it was only greater than zero or less than zero, not equal, then I would cut out the intercepts.